guys, Minions, and welcome to Unmade Gaming, where we were just talking about Animal Crossing and pooping. Uh, we are <laughs> so here. Much poop? All the That's true. We are That's here true. for the final episode of season one of The Void, and I will announce right now, because it's the last episode of the season of Unmade Gaming, uh, if you want to see content like us talking about Animal Crossing and poop, we're doing that next season. We're starting that. Not just Animal Wait. Crossing and poop. But I'm going to be recording our, our private <laughs> conversations. So, so Mike, is that, a, is that a new podcast? <laughs> Animal we're Crossing. Just call, we're just going to call it ACP, Animal Crossing. <laughs> Animal and Crossing. I feel like and it's actually an Animal Crossing RPG yeah. podcast. All, all Ooh. Animals, mm-hmm. All Actual animals play? poop. I quit. I'm going to quit All Twitch. All animals, animals poop. poop. I've never heard a better podcast name. Snow Dogs yeah. is dropping it like... Uh, oh, Snow God. Dogs. Oh, oh, they're God. always got God, my back. Thank you, no. Snow Dogs. Snow Dogs <laughs> always got my back. so much. Why? We just... Oh. Um, yes. So, is that... Gonna be are we a dollar away from two show? bars? We're a dollar away from one bar. I got I to gotta fix the bar. We're oh, from one bar. Uh, so we will be uh, doing <sighs> captures of our before, maybe, oh, and our after calls, definitely, uh, and putting that on Patreon. So if you guys want to see what goes on behind the scenes, check out our Patreon. Um, that being said, if you want to discuss this game with us, please check out our Discord. Links for both of those things down below. And as you can see, we've already talked about, they're in the bottom right-hand corner, which we soon be fixed. There is a corruption bar, and that bar serves two purposes. One, when that bar fills, Doc can see what the hell she wants to us. So far, it's been terrible. Uh, and two, every single dollar that goes into that bar goes back to these wonderful, beautiful, amazing faces that you see here before you. With that, I'm done shilling you. Dot, take us into space. Well, I want it last to be week. Known. Hold yeah. on, I want it to be known that one of the corruption bars gave Paul his flying Roomba. Back. Yes. It did. It wasn't it all bad, happen. Mike. Mm-hmm. Sometimes I'm a kind, wonderful, fantastic GM, Mike. I mean... Wow, he that was, was very hostile. He was really upset about losing the Roomba right before he looked into it, and you made him look at a space demon. So I think <laughs> after the space demon, I don't know if he cared so much about the Roomba. <laughs> it was a Jin, who might in fact have been a demon. Yep. But uh-huh. what does that matter anymore? Because you all released it on Coriolis. No, 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 no. We all didn't release it on Coriolis. One of us who makes bad choices. Hey, 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 listen here, Mike. We are a team. That's right. Okay? If one okay. of us unleashes a demon, we all unleash a demon. Great. Let, then no. if one of us hires a crazy doctor, then we all hired the crazy doctor. And that's well, all I got to say, say about that. Oh, I forgot about the crazy doctor. Who actually <laughs> led it on the ship? You Mike. told me to. You're the captain. <laughs> you the only time I listened to, to you. Hold the on. only time I listened to you. You're like, yeah, so, let this mysterious space baby into our ship. And I was like, okay, sure, captain. You could captain. have just been like, no, nah, I'm just this is, not going to. This is the episode. This is, just let the characters Whose fault infight. is it? <laughs> Whose fault is it? Next <laughs> episode. Your next name for week, this episode. I made bad Pointing choices. Pointing fingers. Legitimately, <laughs> next week is normally an off week, but we're, we're probably going to come back and just, this is the show we're just gonna <laughs> yell at each just, other yeah. about and theory craft and dot's just gonna sit here and just quietly shame just us all make notes yeah. when they're yelling at one another is when you find out the most about their characters and what they care about so you can take it from them <laughs> yeah dot you're a real nice gm i'm here. just gonna be like oh gosh sip it my tea Sipping our tea. <laughs> right, I'll be sipping on your tea. Um, okay, so <laughs> here we come to the end. Um, we'll do a very quick season recap. This group, um, through a strange series of events, were all accepted or brought together uh, to take on a mission. Go from Coriolis, which is in the Kua system, to investigate some strange activity and a radio broadcast that was sent out from Tawin, two systems over. The first jump landed them in Hamura, which is um, the in-between system, to find out that some things had gone down. The last few ships that had jumped through did not make it. Instead, they exploded um, and now have rained debris down on this place. After a couple days in the... Space station here in the Humira system and doing a little bit of research, what they were able to find out is that it wasn't just that they the ships uh, could not get through, the consortium ships could not get through the portal to Tawin. More importantly, something else might have come through. A ship from the first horizon, a place that has been long cut off from the third horizon after the portal wars. 
this is dire information, but they could not not finish their mission. So a dangerous jump they made to the Talon system in the wake of the destruction of a massive freighter. What they found there was nothing but darkness, no stars. A Jin hopped a ride on their ship through the portal. They don't really know a whole lot about that. Um, what they do know is that they found no signs of life in the Talon system. What was there or possibly alive has long since left. And those that stayed behind found themselves rather corrupted by the darkness that has begun to seep into Talon. They got out by the skin of their teeth and made it back to Coriolis last episode. There's been some drama between the crew as to the purpose of this mission, finding out small bits of information like who works for who and what the real intent is in coming here. More importantly, some romance has started to brew and it has left this crew divided a little bit. But last episode, they were all put back on similar purpose. It seems that their return with information that nobody else could seem to find has sparked some interest in a judge who has partnered you with another man. You now have a patron, somebody that's going to fund your endeavors, which is good because in 24 hours time, you'll be contacted about your next one. You've been selected. They gave you a choice. You've been selected to visit Kua planet side to the jungles below the spire. But enough about that, because last time, the four of you found yourself on the vessel, arguing about the fact that Malik has drug a familiar face on board, one that was found in the psych ward of the Coriolis Hospital. A nurse, a surgeon, actually. Um, smart, but a little kooky. She believes that her and Malik are destined to be together. And so Malik decides to invite her to be the ship's medic, something they will definitely need on such a trip to the jungles of Kua. But their conversation was interrupted by a thud, thud, thud. And a HUD screen comes up to reveal that Sewell's father is standing outside of the Defiant Vessel, parked in the private docks in the upper floors of Coriolis. He says nothing, but Sewell, you see him. You know it is him. Balls. Um, you know who that is? Yeah. Should I let him in? Uh, is he knocking on the door? He knocked he's, once, he's like right binged the little screen so you can see him standing in it. And I want to think last episode he said something snarky like, sorry to interrupt or anybody home or something like that. Can he, can he see us or, or, or do we only see him? Well, how does this, how does this contraption work? And they tap the no, it's that, it's just We can only see him, but I, should I answer? What do you want me to do? How about you go talk to him? I don't really want to. Well. Fine. Can we wait like maybe three more minutes? Maybe he'll just walk away. No. Two minutes. You see him talking to the guards. There's no audio, but you see him talking to the guards. I start opening. I, I click the button to open the. Uh... Fuck. <clears throat> go on. I step forward and I open and I go towards the open door. Hello. Sewell. Hey. Son. Yeah. You came back. I did. You seem uh does does he seem surprised? We're all in empathy. Or uh what is it for this game? It is empathy, isn't it? I believe it is. I know what game I'm playing. Uh, is it observ? Can I use observation? No, this is how he's feeling. Damn it! This is oh. empathy. Oh yes. You know your father better than anyone, which is to saying something. Which is saying something because he's not really one for emotions. He seems a bit elated to see you. Yes, uh, but more importantly, he seems he does seem surprised 
maybe he didn't expect you to come back. Yeah, that's what I figured. Um, but yeah, I'm here, you know. You never cease to amaze me, Sue. The best of all three of my boys. Uh, mm, okay. He says, come, let us walk. I really prefer I didn't. He, he leans in to take a look at all the other three. Your crew. I'm, well, not my crew, but I'm, yeah, I guess. He says, you hold the contract, don't you? No, not anymore. It's over. Yeah, it's complete. So guess what that means? You don't have a crew. Well, I, no, I'm talking about what we agreed on after this contract. He says, like I said, let's take a walk. Oh, fuck. All right. And I'll I'll, I'll start walking with him. He smiles at all three of you. Doesn't say anything, kind of tips his head in a cocky way and walks off. He is a rather, um, he has um, aged well. He's a rather attractive older man. Um, still a dick. Still a dick. Uh, he wears, you know, um, kind of tight black uh, space garb uh, and um, a hood very similar to the one that Sewell wears. Damn it. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry, Mike, you're muted. I can tell it's sass, though, because you got that look in your eyebrow. Weird. I did have sass. I said... Uh-huh. Tight black garb, like, tight enough to be a space sex suit? No, this is definitely not his at-home space sex suit, remember? So looser than so a space sex that. suit. This is, this is more like his working suits. This is his Got business it. pants. Okay. All right. Get your business is that, is that good enough on. for you? Yeah, yeah. I just wanted, I I wanted to determine on. how tight was tight. Is that, yeah. Um. Well, on a scale of one to sex space suit, this is like a four. Okay, so not very tight. No. Okay. It's, okay. Less, it, it's less tight and more like tight. I hate you, Mike. I hate your bad jokes. I hate them. I hate them. I want to shoot them out into space. Okay. Anyways. As I was saying, as he walks away, um, leaving the three of you standing there. I I just walk with him without looking back. Yeah, they walk away, and the camera pans back to the three of you standing there. Um, A head pops out of door, and she goes, who is that? Don't worry about it. I shut the door. Oh, okay. Well, the door to outside. Yeah, oh, the door. Yeah, okay. <laughs> not, she, not not next to that door. <laughs> Actually, I do think like as soon as as soon as Tal like releases the touchpad for the door, Malik kind of like looks at the, the hospital, like the the med bay, and then he like do 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 do, and Wait, the, the just, door starts to close. Uh, yeah, and she she kind of goes with it. Um, oh. Tal, is there a lock? how do we is there like a I know the cockpit locks. A med bay does not is lock. Is there like a med bay? I'm not locking her in there. Okay. You you guys do do you think that we should go follow Sul and make sure that like his dad doesn't murder him? Um, <sighs> because that seems like a like he could just not come back. It seems like um, we hit the donation bar. Yeah, we um, oh, God. Just in time for Soul to sit with Daddy. No! I, I, you know, it's like a... It's like no one interrupted us when we were having our familial thing. And, like, I feel it like it'd be rude. I don't think his dad's going to kill yeah, but, him. But, like, I would, wasn't going to kill you. And... I... You, you don't think that we should just, you know, make sure that he's okay? I mean... Sewell's like a, he's like a, he's a murderer for like for hire. I think if yeah, any of us I are gonna, that. right? I think if any of us are gonna be okay in this situation, uh, you know, I fucking hate you, Mike. It might be him. Yeah, but uh, but he's like also saved my life a couple of times. I, no, no, I kind no, no. Of all right, all right, all right. I'll go. No, that's not, what I, that's not what I was saying at all. I think he said his dad was also an assassin. Like, <laughs> what are we gonna do? Is my question. I mean, well, out of anybody, I have the best chance of doing anything to even interfere with it. But I don't know. Exactly. I mean. Besides get shot. Timir's going to start walking. I will open up the door. (sighs) Bebe oops. Are we going somewhere? No, uh, we'll need you to stay here. Um, Possibly prepare for uh, trauma, though. Uh, she is already wearing um, a surgical apron. 
<laughs> over top of her white scrubs and mm -hmm. gloves now. You don't exactly know what she's been doing, uh, but she is already suited for surgery. So she goes, oh, Great. let me get my mask. And she comes oh, no, back no, no, out with like oh, no. just a piece over her face. Oh, no, no, you're staying on the ship. You definitely stay here, okay? But what if they need me? We'll bring we them back. bring them to you. Yeah. It's not a portable med bay. It's a stationary med bay. Okay, well then I'm gonna disinfect everything. Uh, Go for it. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Are you sure there's not like a lock on it? Like we can't, can we get it? Can we buy a lock? <laughs> oh. Well, we just got a bunch Let's of money. Let's go. Can we install okay, fine. Can you have, do you want anything? You want to just punch the guy? You want a gun? And he like, wait, he like <laughs> gesticulates towards Tamir, who's running out in nothing. <laughs> Would, I, I, I have a knife and he'll pull out his like tactical tool. <laughs> just, it's just like a Swiss army knife. We're going to die. I turned to Malik and I'm like, I, we can't let him go alone. No, I'm aware. Let's go. All right. This is your fault. And he just shouts at the back of Tamir. <laughs> Off you go. Um, you are you trying to move with stealth, or are you wanting like to just track them? Like, what is the what is the game plan here? Are you trying to? This is like some Scooby Doo stealthing because this is not what Tamir does. Uh, Scooby do stealthing. So you're gonna run from one door to another. Mm -hmm. Just like okay. kind of peer, you know, like oh, I saw this happen in a movie. This is how yeah. they do it, right? All right. Uh, when Holy. I catch up to him, <laughs> Tamir. Hmm. No, this is the best way to draw attention to you. You have to act like you're supposed to be there. You you just walk. Roll infiltrations, everybody. Could I could I roll for anything to see if I can notice observation? Them I have no infiltration. Great, 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 great. Uh, observation is. Can I do agility? <laughs> it um, is agility. If you roll observation, it rolls agility automatically. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. I don't have. If you don't have infiltration, <laughs> you just roll a flat agility. Yes. Okay. Observation, no. I failed, yeah. No. Yes, yes, yes! Okay. <laughs> so, so camera Disaster cuts crew. <laughs> to you and your father. I am just walking behind him, kind of like trying not to look he's at a, him. He says, step up. I'm not going to bite. That's not what I'm worried about, but okay. And then else I'll... He says, then what are you worried about? Oh, you remember what you did to Hector? It's just, you know, and then just kind of continue, like, matching his He speed. says, oh, yes, <laughs> that situation was he, uh, necessary. So, kind of like, kind of grips his fist at the word situation. It was necessary. Sure. And this is significantly different, considering the fact that you were rather successful. I guess, uh, I guess that is the key difference. Your friends are following us. What? They're, they're, they're Your harmless. Your friends? I know. They're, they're not my friends. They're just coworkers. They are not even relative, honestly. Just don't even, like, consider. I know when you're don't lying, Sewell. No, you don't. What do you want? Why are we? Why are we walking? He says, "I, I will. I'm taking you to one of my favorite places, a celebration for a job well done." I don't want to celebrate with you. He says, "You came with me, didn't you?" I. It, you usually when you tell me stuff, it's not really a choice. He simply smiles, gestures for an elevator. Come, we're almost there. Fucking okay, and I'll just I'll just walk, and in he goes. Uh, the three of you watch the elevator. They get on an elevator and they go up about 10 or 12 floors. You see, um, it stops. Um, yeah. 
<laughs> raise my Excuse hand. me, I have a question, Dot. <laughs> DM, I have a question. Um, when I'm going up the elevator, can I look down and try to see them? Oh yeah, you'll see. You can see them. They're yeah. they're definitely not stealthy. Yeah. Um, do I make eye contact with any of them? Uh, sure. Pick one person. Malik. Sewell makes eye contact with you as he gets on the elevator. And I give him the finger. Your father laughs. I see you have quite a rapport with these. You can tell he's judging them. Yeah. Very heavily. It's like, they're not, they, they did a good job with the mission. He says, I see that. The fact that you all returned, well, that's what do you mean of an fact? anomaly. What do you mean? The f Whatever. <laughs> where, where are we going? Um, the elevator pings. You get off. You step into what is clearly some kind of entertainment district. Um, the bustle and sound of people hit you as there is like a nightclub over here. These open, very fancy open cantinas and bars. And uh, he points down a little ways to a bar, um, a club, really. It's called the Black Hole. Sorry. Don't be. Uh -huh. Your father says, I love this place. I bet. Best you dancers do. in the galaxy. Come on. And he grabs you by I, the shirt and drag begins dragging you in. Oh. You're not too far from now. As you get to the door, a very large bouncer looks at your dad looks at you. He says, you know, we can only let him one of you. I'm completely fine with that. I'm so sorry. I couldn't go. He says, you but I, uh, your father reaches in his like thing, pulls out a very special coin. It's the only way it can be described. Round and circular. Um, and simply passes it off. He's like, consider it a favor. The bouncer takes it, knowing something that you don't. And he pockets it huh. and lets you both uh, in. You pot past the line of people that, oh, oh, screaming women that wanted to get in the door, clearly spent hours getting fancied up. But both of you get in. Once and we is, enter yeah. the club, I will, I would pull up my hood a little bit further and kind of like hover, like push it further up so that I try to cover up my eyes and my face. Okay, you try to hide yourself. He says, son, you don't have to hide yourself here. Yeah. And as he gestures, you realize this whole place, it's like a neon dance club. And I don't mean, um, there's some dancing, like the general public doing some dancing, but there are women, you know, not even women, there are beautiful people everywhere. Um, they're up on stages moving. And, um, and he says, this is, of course, a treat and a delight. And he kind of looks, he says, most people never even get in this place. So I'm very proud. You, you, you know I'm not for these kind of scenes. For them. He says, scenes like this are made because of us. He says, come on, I'll show you my favorite booth. I don't Buy you a dance? You want to dance? No, I don't want to dance. I just... I w he gestures over, there's a corner booth, he's, and he says, come on, before somebody takes it. I think it... Uh, fucking... Balls. All right. And then I'll just follow. Follow when you do. Yeah. Is this going to take long? Like, he says, Would you relax? Always I, so serious, Sue. Considering the fact why. that you were supposed to die out in space, you'd think you'd what relax do you mean, a little bit. What do you mean, supposed to die? Well, you're pretty blunt about that. Oh, you didn't. <laughs> right. Never putting two and two together, Sue. Uh, the mission was uh, an experiment. The likelihood of your survival was one in 10. No, I get that. I get that you sent me to die. Thanks. I'm oh. curious to like, why are you telling me this? Oh, <laughs> because I am proud to say that my son is the one in 10. You let a group of ragtag <sighs> Undertrained to uh, to visit a dead system, and you came all the way back. And I've heard you bought your own way out of the syndicate. I did. He says that you don't need me anymore. I never did. 
Wonderful. It's good. Uh, we're actually here meeting some friends. Oh, okay. Why? They'll be here soon. I probably should. I heard that you had one of my suits. Yeah, it's in the ship. I'd like that back. It's very expensive. Yeah, sure. I can. I can go get it for you right now. I'll be back before you know it. You can even practice using it here, I guess. Why are you so nervous? I just, I don't want to be here. Isn't it pretty obvious? He kind of, like, thinks that over. You don't want to celebrate your successes? I'm My celebration is for us to never interact again. You give me that, and I'm a happy person. Okay. Fine. We don't have to interact again. Off in the distance, he waves a hand to gesture to somebody. Who's, who's that? Who are you? Who are you calling over? You turn around. Your keen senses and eyes pick up on it immediately. A tall, thin dancer begins strolling across the club as if she owns the place. In fact, she may be stepping off the stage herself. It's, I must. If I look at her, it is. Is it? Is it the dancer? Okay. Okay, and then <laughs> Saul's just gonna look at him and be like, oh, fuck. And I turn back to my dad. Well, if you don't want to be here, I can't keep you. And I will assure that I am not around anymore. He, like, rolls his eyes a little bit and then sits down, kind of surrendering, surrenderingly. <laughs> See? Now, was that so hard? Enjoy a drink. And he got a snaps at um, a, wait, a waitress. Um, and the beautiful dancer once again joins you. She slides into the booth. Your father's arm is already on the back of it. And she slips in as if that is where she belongs. Well, uh, look, look at you. I thought you were um, back in where we just were that I can't seem to remember. <laughs> yes, yes, she smiles and she says, uh, the Hammurabi station, it did yeah. not suit yeah. me too well. You left pretty quickly. People were being attacked, I was told. Yeah. A nurse almost died. How did, you, was that public knowledge? It was pretty well public that somebody attacked her. I mean, even after you left the next day, they had to ship her off to Coriolis gotcha. for surgical okay. reasons. So, yeah, it was uh, pretty unfortunate. She mm. was an innocent bystander. It's almost like she didn't need to get hurt. Well, sometimes you just find yourself in the wrong place at the wrong time. Yeah, carrying under my, under the wrong breath. things. I guess that is somewhat true. She smiles. She looks at your father, all doe-eyed. Roll an empathy. I don't know uh, that you'll be able to figure Saul this out. Saul is going to basically assume that his leverage over his dad is no use, is not useful anymore since she's here. And they seem pretty all buddy-buddy, so fuck that. And I failed. Great. It's... Mm -hmm. Regardless, you may not know what she's up to, but regardless, she is seducing your father hardcore. Does she mean it? You don't know. Um, and he brushes some hair back. She doesn't have much of it. She keeps it in kind of a very sh uh, short kind of cut around her face. And of course, the big headpiece that she wears. But um, he brushes it and he says, oh, Samina. And he goes, I mean, uh, Amira. She smiles a little bit <laughs> and breathes, realizing that he let something go hmm. that he should not have. How, how do you two know each other? She looks at your father like, who's going to answer? He gestures for her. She's way better with words than he is. She says, he was a regular here for a long time. Oh, okay. Um. She says, and I was, how you say, their best answer. Gotcha. Right. But um, yeah. your father's also in good business. And his business and my business, I, they just worked really well together. 
And what business is that? She says mine or his, because I think you know what your father does. Yeah, I'm yours, yours, obviously. Yeah, yours. Yes, yours. She smiles. She says, what do you think it is, Sue? Well, it's definitely not dancing. Oh, the sun. She looks at your father. Isn't he a bright one? He kind of cringes at the concept of anything bright. She says, so, if not a dancer, then? Maybe, um, I don't know, transportation? No. Oh. Sure, I transport goods that are procured from other vessels. I look at my dad. Do you know of her career choice? He says, of course I do. She's been beneficial in the past. I'm a little confused here. So you know what she does. Do you know all of what she does? He says, if I knew everything that she did, our arrangement would be a little different. I trust that she does what is best for her. She smiles mm. and she says, I do. Have you put it all together yet, Sue? Oh, yeah. I think I pretty much got the picture here. You guys are perfect for each other. <laughs> she kind of laughs. Your father laughs. What a quaint way of putting it. Is, is this the friend you're talking about that we were waiting for? Uh, yes. He says, you can go now, Sewell. You're spoiling the mood. Right. I look at the table. How many drink? Are there drinks? Or There are three drinks on the table. I pick up one of the drinks and I kind of hold it up to the air and just go, well... And for the like, soul, will kind of like smile a little bit, kind of creepily, and just be like, "Best wishes to the both of you." And then he'll just take the shot and just put it down. Bye, soul. Your father says. I don't answer, and I just kind of get up and start walking. Just any. I don't even know where the exit is. I just want to leave the booth, so I'm just gonna like start walking okay. around, trying to like. You Make start trying right. to, like, get out. You're, like, moving past people. This place smells of sweat um, and endorphins. Um, people are dancing. Their costumes are... This is place is actually lit completely in black light. So their teeth, their eyes, anything on their clothing um, that has any kind of fluorescent to it is just glowing. The whole thing is over in blue, um, basically black light, blue light. Um, and as you try to skedaddle your way out, A very large hand grasps your shoulder. Oh, fuck. What now? And I turn around. It is a face that you thought you weren't going to see again. Maybe you completely forgotten about. But, Sul, you made a deal. I did. And when you make deals, you have to uphold them. Right. Fuck. And the big tattoo artist from the very first episode, seems to also frequent this place. If you remember correctly, your father called him by name, so maybe they have some kind of arrangement. But your father, seeing this from the booth, does not get up to help you this time. You said you did not want his help. Mm -hmm. And you did not want to see him again. Mm -hmm. And so, being a good father, he will honor your wishes. The gruff faces... Now you're one I never thought I'd see again. Oh, shit. It's you. I want to think we had a deal. You, you know, I, I I thought about it. It was a good deal, but... He snaps his fingers, which is actually hard to hear over uh, the music in this place. But he snaps his fingers nonetheless. And... A crew of dudes begin to slide in, uh, circling you on the dance floor. He has his hand tightly gripped on your shoulders, and he says, no need to go anywhere too quickly. I believe that I owe you something. No, no, you don't really need to give me anything. I'm okay. I'm not, <laughs> as he's holding me, can I, if I look around, it, it's a very crowded place, right? It is very crowded. 
is a tightly like tight knit lot of people. Um, this is kind of the middle of the day, so it's not as packed as it may say be tonight. But then again, who who watches time and space? People come and go as they please. Um, eat, sleep, party when they want to. So I'd say it's relatively crowded, but it's not like packed, packed, like shoulder to shoulder. Okay. So for a moment, <laughs> Soul kind of like reaches for his dagger, but then kind of has like an immediate flashback of everything that's like happening with the sponsor, the new possibilities. And he puts his hand away. There's a lot of civilians in this area. Yeah, and he can't risk any of that. So he's going to look at the guy, look over to his dad, realize he's in a rough position, and just be like, all right. <laughs> let's, let's get this over with. Payment in flesh. And he clap, claps you on the back of the neck and begins pushing you off the dance floor. The three larger men follow. And the camera cuts. Going back a little bit in time, two to three of you, do you get on the elevator and follow them? Yes. Tamir, he flicked us off. So, did, maybe he doesn't. Does want that us to say? Get killed. Does that say help me? Because to me, that says fuck you. No, it says to me that he's just trying to get us off of his case because he doesn't want to see us get hurt. Which means yeah. he knows he's about me to go get hurt. Either. Tamir pushes the elevator button. <laughs> Dot, is, there, is, is, this, is this one of those situations where there's only one thing on that floor? Um, it's not just one thing on the floor. It's like a district, an entertainment district on this floor. Okay. All right, let's go. See if we can follow where it is. Uh, yeah, I think Tamir will see the, I mean, sorry, Malik will see the floor that Tamir selected. Yes. And then well, point- and you would see it had matched where they got yeah. off. And he'll point at it and go, do you know where he went on this plaza? Oh, but we don't go find him. That's a We can try. It's a whole plaza. Are you yeah. going to go door to door? The elevator goes up. What's, what's the plan here, bud? I don't know. We'll think of it as we go. There's a that deafened sound of clubs all in a row. Malik shoots a look to a, to to Tal like hey. definitely never uh, been on this. Like, get ready for this roller coaster. <laughs> um, all three of you, as the doors open, can roll an observation. Actually, I probably would have visited this floor once before. Wow. Learn new things about, my. about There are all kinds of places here. Not all of them are the same. Oh, fuck me. Great. It oh, is going to be Malik. Fuck, dude. Malik. Malik, <laughs> I waste a fucking super double whammy crit on bullshit. <laughs> seeing your friend enter a club with his dad's not total bullshit. Oh, they're friends. Don't make it sound like that. You see, you see um, Sewell and his father, um, his father's still clasping me by the back of the neck, that kind of, it feels icky kind of grasp as if he's maybe forcing uh, Sewell into this place. And you see they enter a club, um, a, kind of like the next block or like strip up called the Black Hole. Uh, perfect. So Malik sees this. And he grins and he goes, uh, Tamir. And he points to the doors, like the, the backside of, of, of um, uh, Sewell and his father walking in and the doors kind of closing to draw Tamir's attention to it. And then the moment Tamir takes a single step forward, he like grabs Tal for a second and leans in and says, how much money did you get? This could be really funny. I don't. What what is that place? Um, let's call it a dance club. But it's very expensive to get in, so like, we're gonna have to bribe our way in. I don't think I have that much money. <laughs> well, he's not gonna get in. And he points to Tamir walking away. But also, 
I'm pretty sure. And he like sizes Tamir up for a second. He's also never been in one. And that could be well worth the trip. I look at you deadpan for a moment there. You've just been embroiled in brother on brother hijinks. <laughs> <laughs> and then I walk off after Tavir without you saying walk off another after word. Malik, you see that the bouncer that's standing there like checking people in mm-hmm. has a data pad that he's checking names on. Oh, perfect. Um <laughs> Oh God. I'm gonna could, I'm, I'm gonna try could. it. Uh, I'm gonna you know what? Let's you know, balls to the wall, why not? Hold <laughs> on, let me give myself Super double. The more rolls you do, the more chance there is for just failures. Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) Limited success. Can I? Can I at least get Tamir's name on the list? Sure. Just his name. Sure. (laughs) Okay. Um, I would say with the limited success, um, (sighs) you managed to get Tamir's name on it before Uh Tamir makes it there. Tamir, you see, there's a very long line. A uh, large man at the front is checking people one by one. So far, maybe the club is full. He's not letting anybody in. Perfect. Um, Tomato's going to take a quick look at the line and skip it. Uh, walk straight up to the man who seems to be in charge and <laughs> um, b- pull off his uh, shimak a bit and hold out tools. Uh, my name is Engineer Tamir. I'm here to repair the waste removal system. Uh, there seems to have been a problem. I was somewhere. Waste removal? He says, I don't have any note about waste removal. And he kind of scrolls through. He says, do you have a name? Mm, yes, uh, Tamir al-Assad. Tamir. Oh, I have that name. Oh, I get it. Waste removal. <laughs> get inside. Tamir's he didn't like your window. window. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. <laughs> what? <laughs> he says... I, I have you here as a guest on the list. VIP, in fact. Why do you call it waste removal? It's kind of gross. Oh, but that Might want to find a better innuendo for your business, man. This is my best day ever. <laughs> Mine okay. too. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Tamir's just going to walk in. Tamir, you walk in. Maybe you don't know what to expect. Wait. Have you ever been to a club like this? <laughs> I'm so, like the wait, the moment the door opens and Tamir hesitantly walks in, I think Tal, who's following him, just hears <laughs> coming from back where she left him. <laughs> and Malik is doubled over, cry oh, laughing. No. Um. Okay. Oh my gosh. So, through a strange series of misunderstandings um, and miscommunication, Tamir has made it in the club. Tamir, (laughs) your eyes go wide as everything in this place is lit in black light. Um, Beautiful people wear very little clothing and grind all over each other. There are incredible dancers on these kind of levitating stages above everybody's head. They undulate and move. You've probably only ever seen one dancer do this. Um, and now there are lots of them. Um, in fact, you're not in the door, but just a couple seconds before a very attractive human steps up to you, rather androgynous, but, um, they lean in and they run a finger down your cheek and they simply say, I, uh, you look lonely. Oh, oh no, I'm, I'm not lonely at all. I'm, I'm here, uh, visiting a friend. Oh, well, if you want to ditch your friend, I'll be your friend. Oh, um... No, thank you. I'm 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 here on on, on business, so. Um, Me too. It's, she boops you on the nose and walks away. There's a lot of touching going on. <laughs> touching. This place is, is a lot of touching, and uh, you. This is just me in a fucking club. I'm so <laughs> <sorry>. <laughs> <sighs> <sighs> You can roll an observation now that you're in here to see if you can see Sewell and his father. Okay. And Tamir is, like, making this observation kind of, like, doing like this. Like, just... Yeah, you're trying not to look really obvious. Just really trying yeah. to be respectful of people. There's no such thing as respect in the black hole. I... Mm, oh, my mm. God, Dot. <laughs> <sighs> I don't know who... I don't the know darkness who will consume right you. Right now, but if, I feel like you and Mike switch roles. I don't know what's going on. This is my literal best day ever, and I'm quoting that. <laughs> There's oh, no such thing dude. as respect in the black hole. 
Oh. I love you so oh, much, Dot. Oh, You're probably my favorite person ever. So you fail that observation. You look around, trying to avoid making eye contact with any of the very scantily clad humans in this bar um, makes it difficult. And at the moment, you don't currently see Sewell or his father. Great. Sewell? <laughs> Tamir's just going to start kind of calling out his name. Uh, the the club music thumps um, mm -hmm. as the lights kind of shift and change. Uh, the black lighting is very weird as people's teeth and eyes glow, making them look like demons in the dark. And uh, as you wander about, what your eye does catch is um, the figure of a woman that you've seen before. Uh, the one from the... Uh, Hammurabi station. Uh, she is crossing the bar over towards a booth that's kind of behind a like half curtain. Um, she slips in as if she owns the place. She looks great. You realize that the beautiful tattoos that she had kind of on her face that pan into her headpiece that she wears um, are actually UV and they glow in the dark. She disappears now, behind the half curtain. Does Tamir know? that she's not great. Tamir knows that Sewell has a distaste. I don't know how much time you spent around her yeah, other than a I few seconds no, at didn't. the end before mm -hmm. like everything went down with the um with the doctor. Mhm. Mm yeah, I, I I don't think he does, but hey, familiar face, great. He will pursue. You kind of try to make your way across. You're trying not to touch people to no avail um, as you cut across the club. Um, roll an obs another observation as you get close. Again, it's loud in here. Another failure. You can't hear what's happening in the booth. You take to a table just nearby trying to listen in, but you can't hear anything. Um, a few minutes pass. A woman tries to serve you a drink if you'd like one. No, thank you. And um, eventually, you're a couple tables down, you see Sewell leave abruptly um, and try to find a new way out, maybe not even crossing back past you, maybe down to the dance floor itself. And he's trying to cut through people. You see it happening. And then a large figure clasps him on the shoulder. There's a couple seconds of, of interaction. Um, again, unable to read the lips or what's happening. Um, this large person, Sewell, and three additional lackeys follow them off the dance floor near kind of what might be considered a VIP room or a back room near the front of the stage. Great. Um, so, uh, the mirror is going to get up from the booth that he had uh, taken a moment to sit in and get to that area as quick as possible. Okay. Um, if they don't make it into the, into the booth, I think I'd like to tackle the dude. You want to try to attack. Okay, so first let's make the decks to cut through the club. Uh, violence on Coriolis is a thing. There are a lot of repercussions for violence on Coriolis. Yep. And you do know right now it is a hostile environment and security is thick. Though there doesn't seem to be a lot of security in the bar, at least not marked security. Mm -hmm. Inquiry. Yes. Do I see... Do I? Do, can I make a roll to see if I see Tamir or nothing? No. No, you are very much unaware of all of this. Um I'm going to just, nope, great. You're bumping into people and you're trying to get to them. You you might even try to like push past to make a tackle. You land face down on the ground. A few women scream as you like step back, but they disappear with Sewell into a back room that says backstage. Great. Uh, damn it. Uh, Tamir's going to go ahead and get uh, back up. Um, he's going to activate his comms and try to get a hold of uh, Tal and um, Malik. Not a problem. You come in. All you, the two of you here is just like as Tamir um, taps into the, the shared comms. Are they able to hear him at all? Yes. Or is it just yes. totally dragged? Oh, yes. Okay. And you can just hear it like in the background. It's like humming in the background of the mm -hmm. But yes, you can. You guys, I, I think Sol is seriously in trouble. You need to get in here now. Uh, there's He's being escorted away by a giant man with tattoos and at least two or three other other men. Oh yeah, that guy's gonna, that guy, that, that guy's bad news and we can't get in. The door, you're not, we're not on the VIP list. 
The guy's already told me no, like several times. If I continue asking, he's probably going to have me arrested. <laughs> okay. I think right. that guy mentioned, I met that guy before. Uh, he wanted Sewell to kill someone or he was going to give Sewell a tattoo. So I think win-win. Oh, he there you go. He's he probably didn't... just getting his tattoo. Yeah. Is tattoo like a new slang thing for... You know, Killed? I don't. I don't know. The guy who offered the tattoo was also heavily tattooed, and everyone that was with him was also heavily tattooed. Also, Sewell bullied his kid. I think. I mean, it doesn't sound completely out of character. And if everybody's tattooed, then um, you know, maybe it's just a thing. It could be like a family thing. We should just just come out. I don't think I even Could know how to get out. Thing. <laughs> There's a lot of doors now. Not one of them is labeled exit. I'm just curious. What's uh, what's it like in there? It's very loud. And is it, it very loud? very weird. You hear somebody say, hey, cutie. Uh, Who's that? Um, uh, hi. Is she pretty? Excuse me. Malik. What? Shut up. <laughs> Do I hear this on my comms? Oh my yeah. god, please, yes! <laughs> it would come through your comms <laughs> in your ear. It That's absolutely the would. the best thing I've so ever heard. I, just, I, I didn't know if I actually had it on. <laughs> just add a little thing. As I'm being pushed away, Soul's face is in utter confusion. And he's just like... As you're walking, you're listening to this, the three bouncer, or these three large men, uh, and the gentleman with his hand on your shoulder, don't stop walking. They walk you into a back hallway um, that looks to go, like, backstage. There are a couple small rooms, and he says, I'm the best at what I do. Yeah. And nobody wants tattoos like artists. And he stops at a door, knocks a couple times. Somebody creaks it open, and he lets you into a back room. It smells of burnt flesh. And ink. There is a woman laid out on the table, fa kind of face down. She's getting something put into her shoulder. Um, you watch as they take something that's kind of like embering and hot, and they dip it into something. It smolders. He checks it, and then he brands her, leaving... Um, some kind of mark uh, branded on her shoulder. If it I look at that, do, do I, does it look familiar to me? Um, you've probably seen them before, uh, though these are, um, this is one of many tattoos that can be found upon Coriolis. Um, this is a charcoal burned tattoo. It's like a brand, but instead they put charcoal on the end of the branding, um, adding like coloring to it as the scar heals. Um. With seeing that conversation with his dad and then having this entire conversation in his ear, Soul's getting very agitated and like really short fused. So, uh huh. And he yeah. says, Come on in. He says, I've got a whole book of designs for you to look through. I have a, a feat or whatever here called intimidating. Okay. I would like to try and intimidate this guy into a parlay so that we can re renegotiate. How? What do you say to intimidate him? I look at the tattoo and at this point I pull my hood down and I kind of lower my things a little bit and you can see and I show that there are multiple scars and cuts that were up that look and, and there's branding and all that that's probably already applied. <laughs> By his father mm -hmm. and he shows it off and says my real estate's pretty packed and he pulls it back up and he, he, <laughs> he loves he says oh i didn't plan that for you i've got something really special in mind all right listen listen i've had a very long couple fucking days mm. and i understand that our deal did not go through however I might have a better offer, counter offer, oh. if you're willing to hear me out. That sounds more like persuasion than intimidation. You dick. <laughs> Great. 
Roll up an no, intimidation. I, I, I'll do pers uh, persuasion. I, I okay. don't think I don't think Soul is like the intimidating type, to be honest. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, so here's what I'm gonna do then, um, because. How about this? I look unstable as fuck. Okay. Okay. Um, I'm twitching. My eye is twitching. You seem a little unhinged. Sure. This is a command roll. A command roll? Mm hmm. So, with. Am I allowed to use my intimidating thing or no? Yes. It, I believe it adds a dice, one more oh. extra die. So, there'll it be like when you. To test force instead of manipulation. Oh, interesting. Okay. There you go. When they're threatening someone, damn it. Yep, when you're threatening someone. So you can say, you dick, and push him against the wall, but it is a force roll. So you got to, like, intimidate him. Okay. So, I, yeah, I think at this point, he just, okay, I'll push him, and I'll be like, I'm sick and tired of all these back and forths, and I, you're going to fucking listen to me, or else I will carterize your eyes out. Okay, roll a force. He's going to go against you. Let's start with that. All right, come on, come on. Fuck, I'm going to reroll. Great, I'll take another darkness point. These are just gonna, I got so many to go through tonight, everybody. Like limited success. And it says if I get a limited success, I have the option to not accept your opponent's conditional demands. Okay. The, oppo the, the opponent may then refuse to deal if, wait. Oh, if she in, intends to attack you, then never mind. Okay. Yes, if they yeah. intend to attack you. Um, okay. Um, this is going to be, um, I'm going to go against his force, which is not easy. Just, I just really want you to know that. Right. Um, okay. He does not succeed on any of them. Okay. You're lucky. Actually, no. You didn't do that. I'm going to spend a darkness you point. You got 800 of them. I'm going to spend a darkness point. Um, I believe I get to re-roll. Is that what I can do? Re-roll that. No. Oh, yes, I got a, I got a success. So you thram him against the wall. His three dudes, like, bulk up instantly. Um, as you slam him against the wall, some of these tools and things go shuddering about um, as you smash him, and he begins to... <laughs> And laughing under your force and your pressure, he grabs you back. The two of you are now in this kind of grappled hold, pressed against the wall, your masculine energies banging against one another. Uh, he leans in and he says, all right. He says, how about this? I'll get one with you together, huh? He says, you're not walking out of here until you pay one or the other. And the last time I checked, you and your friends made a deal with the man you were supposed to kill. So you have a choice. We get a tattoo. Or you die. And I'll brand your body before we dump it out into space. His adrenaline starts to kind of like go down. He's like, fuck, fine. And he Under goes, one condition. The deal is with me and not the crew. Of course. I would never put it on my crew. These three men are like, yeah, fuck that. Like, <laughs> you know, behind him. I let go. I'm like, fine, fine. And he's like, come on. I got something special for you. All right. What You're is You're going to love this. And he says, have a seat. And he kind of thumps you and you kind of plop back into a chair. Ow. He sits next to you and he snaps. Two women walk over. They are twins, identical, head shaved. Uh, you can tell where their hair once grew. It no longer does. They've been tattooed across their scalp, down their neck and onto their shoulders. Their body is tattooed all over. And he says, so tell me, Sue, what do you like? Not to get a tattoo. That's not an option. Answer the question. Uh, you got something, a pretty face. He thinks for a minute. I like drones. He kind of looks at you and goes, drones. Well, yeah. then you're going to love this. Because, well, you'll find out. The twins pop gloves onto their hands. Um, the sound may even make you jump a little. As they pull out a special. A what? a special like machine in their hand. It kind of looks like some kind of um, gun, like a regular tattoo gun, but it's what it's feeding to that seems most interesting to you. A jar with this kind of glowing blue ethereal liquid in it. 
Whoa, 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 that doesn't look like regular ink. He goes, I told you I had something special for you. Well, I, I, courtesy, at least tell me what that is. He says, that is nanobites. I'm pretty sure I'm allergic to that. He goes, it's funny. You're not. Nobody actually is. He says, don't worry. They make for the best tattoos, and more importantly, well, you'll find out. Oh, and on. the woman comes over and she come says, on, dude. where do you come want on. it? Come on, dude. Uh, nowhere, nowhere. He's, he's joking. He's joking. She goes, I can't tattoo nowhere. I look at, I look at the tattooed guy. <laughs> do I get to pick? He goes, what? I'm not a bad guy. Okay. Um... Consent. <laughs> Uh, and then the soul kind of is like, oh, okay. A little confused. Um, <clears throat> I don't know. Does I guess does it doesn't need to be anywhere per, uh, specific thought or no? no. Okay. Uh, you sure. get to choose. He's like, you know what? Here, he's like, use this one. And I I, I roll up my sleeve and it's expose my entire right arm. Okay. Uh, which is his fighting arm. So. Great, you expose your entire right arm, maybe a place without a scar. And she goes, you're gonna like this one. She's like, do you believe in, she's like, do you have a patron or a, she kind of leans in a little closer, you know. I, I, I like- Are you lean, a religious man? I like lean forward and I go like, and I just like whisper judge. And then I like lean back. She smiles and she says, perfect. And he looks at her. She looks at him. The other twin adds something into a HUD deck just nearby. It's connected to this jar. It pipes in something. Scan runs. The blue kind of throbs and undulates in this, this container. And she goes, okay, ready. She turns it on. And the camera cuts to Tamir. Quickly, Tamir, what do you do? Tamir, seeing that he just is not having any luck with this place, he is probably backed up to a panel and is trying to mechanically short circuit to get a fire alarm set off. Okay. He wants to empty this club. Okay. Uh, you go over to the side trying to find a panel, probably near the stage. You, If you don't want to be seen doing this, you will need to roll for it. If not, and you don't care, then you need to... Yeah, then you can just roll the tech because you're going to do this as a tech, a technology, yeah, right? Yeah, not tech. as a data gen. You're not ch trying to hack it. <sighs> no, yeah, this is a mechanical, like literally just like clip, clip a wire, shift it over, activate the alarm. Cool. Um, all right, let's get a technology roll. Mm -hmm. Nicely done. Oh. You pop the panel. You kind of jimmy around, try not to be seen. You know exactly what to pull, and it pull it, and it snaps. The camera cuts back. Sewell, you feel this needle ripping through your skin. This is no normal tattoo. It feeds in nanobites that grab onto your tissue and your skin. You can feel it. Uh, you might even scream out in pain. Um, the man may even cover your mouth to keep you quiet as she draws the symbol of the judge. I think Soul, I mean, Soul's used to pain, but I, I definitely this would be a different type of pain. Yeah. Uh, and he would be kind of thrashing around and like... Using he holds you arm. in place as much as possible. Yeah. Um, and... She's almost done. You think you might pass out. When the sound of an alarm starts going off, bow, 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 sprinkler systems and begin raining on the club. You hear people outside scream. The music jerks um, as uh, people begin trying to exit the space. A fire alarm seems to be going off. The man's like, what? Wait, I didn't even get mine. He was very upset, but she is... Pretty much done. The symbol of the judge carved, carved into your arm. You could feel the nanobites moving through your skin in this area, isolated to the scarring that is here. It glows under the UV light very clearly. You've received your punishment from the judge oh, for not completing your mission. And I have played 
the judge card that I had for you. Oh, shit. Oh, okay. Okay, good shit. And is it like bleeding? Yeah. Am I bleeding? Am oh, I bleeding? it's bleeding down yeah. your arm. Um, it's now it's like glowing. It's like it's basically like they took one of those glow sticks, broke it open, and just and like I, drew it okay. onto your skin. And, I, and yeah. the other guy's like leaving. Do I see him? Leaving? Um, he, he's like, I don't know. What do we do? Somebody comes back and goes, We have tattoo. to evacuate, evacuate the space. If you don't get your fucking tattoo, I will give you one with my damn knife. I swear to God. Um, the woman goes, okay, okay. Um, the guy goes, take it easy, take it easy. And he begins to carve, she begins to carve into him. She does not carve the judge into him. Instead, she carves a massive circle. And when it's done, it glows in embers like yours. And he says, congratulations, Sue. Yeah. You're now a delivery boy. The nanobites in your arms carry information. What? When you get to Kua, somebody will contact you. Whoa. And he goes, I have the rest of the information. If they want it, they can come visit me here. D and he claps you on the back and he goes, good. You didn't even scream like a girl. Now run. I, he goes, I said run. All right. Oh, damn. <laughs> and, I, and then he and so, like, walked back with his arm like bleeding like. Yeah, you're kind of like holding your like, what the hell is he talking about? I mean, what the fuck just happened? Yeah, a little traumatized. And as you exit, you see Tamir by the door. He's got his hand in a wall. He's jimmied something. The sprinkler systems are pouring on everyone. Everybody's wet. There's about an inch of water on the floor. Malik and Tao, you hear an alarm go off and people begin rushing out of the club. It becomes pandemonium on the outside of it. I, I run up to Tamir like, I'm, I'm, I'm going to know that he was here because I heard it all. And I'm just going to grab him. And like pull him up and start dragging him out. What, Zul, are you okay? Shut up. And then I start dragging him out of the club. Uh, I'm like, the fuck do you think the middle finger means? Do you think it means come get me? Dumbass. And then I run and I like, <laughs> and like walk out and I just shove him out. And off you go. The two of you pop out, Tao, Malik, you see them. Um, Sewell's holding his arm uh, for some reason. And in the other hand, he's dragging uh, Tamir with him who looks... A bit shell shocked as well. And I'm going to toss them towards in front of Tal and Malik. And I'm like, the fuck? What? We couldn't Why? stop him. Yeah, Why did you let him go. go in there alone? We could only get one person in. I thought he was your brother and I thought you cared for him. Yeah. I couldn't stop him. What do you. I, I'm like. Tamir's not a fucking kid, you guys. Also, and I just turn around and start walking back to my ship like, fuck this. Not grasping the gravity of the moment at all. Malik goes, yeah, but like as soon as she walks away, he goes, yeah, but he he's never been in one of those kind of clubs before. So like. I like shake my head and just start walking towards. Why is no one fighting this as funny as I am? As you begin walking, where are you headed? I'm I'm walking back towards the ship. Yeah, towards the ship. You guys are headed back to the ship. I'm assuming that's where Tal and everyone like. That's where I'm. That's assuming. where I'm going. Mm -hmm. Great. Okay, so back to the ship. Pandemonium. You guys watch as guards run past you. Uh, there's a bit of a wait for the elevator. You could take the stairs. It's I'm a few dead floors quiet. down. I'm dead quiet the whole way. Doesn't say anything. Uh, I want to keep moving, so I'll take the stairs. Great. You all begin taking the stairs down. You're huffing it. Um, and as you reach the level uh, where your ship is docked, uh, there's a familiar face outside your vessel. A cheery little man. Tamir, you don't know this man. Mal uh, Malik, you don't know this man. But Sewell and Tao, your patron stands before you. He's holding a box. Oh, right. He smiles. Right. <laughs> Hello. Causing trouble. I, t I, t I lean over to Malik and Tamir. This is the guy that's going to and... Patreon pay help us. He's our sponsor, dude. Sponsor. He's our Patreon sponsor. <laughs> yeah. Our Patreon sponsor. I got forced into too. a painful nano. I don't, um, don't want to hear it. Speaking of, you can support this channel by going to Patreon. Speaking of our Patreon, what? links in chat. <laughs> See, it was all on purpose, just saying. Uh, Patreon yeah. link down below. Um, so, walking up to him, I say... Hi, uh, what's in the box? Something for all of you. Come with me. Come on. Hi. Great. Okay. I just pushed Malik pissed off. I will, I will walk straight past him. And he goes, oh, how rude of me. I haven't even introduced myself. Um, he says, 
I'm Nasir, your new patron. <laughs> oh, that's the guy you were hired to kill. Little squat uh, man. Um, he goes, yes, that was the plan, but Sewell here, and he kind of claps you on the arm where your new tattoo is. Um, and he says, but Sewell here saved my life, didn't you, Sewell? I go like, yeah, really goes, regretting it right now. Great. He goes, wait, what? Nothing. As just... you walk, he leads you to his place, um, the one that you, the two of you have visited, but Malik, Tamir, you've never been here before. And as he opens the door, Tamir, you go through some kind of waiting room and then through another still like, locked soaked. door. Yeah, everybody's oh, yeah. You're dripping it's wet. Soaking dripping wet. wet um, and you enter yeah. his <laughs> private collection of artifacts. Incredible place. Um, for you specifically, Tamir, this place is amazing. Oh, I should probably stop playing the club music now. We're not at the club no more. I have I have that tab muted. I didn't even know we had music. Yeah, I had club music playing in the background. <laughs> maybe maybe he just likes club music. You never know. I think I might also have it muted. <laughs> yeah, I was playing I was playing cyberpunk club music, and I none of it. you were there no, to enjoy it. it. It's I fine. Mean... It was for me. It's fine. Um, it's fine. What is it for you, Dot? It's for me. It's just for me. Uh, so oh, being for agitated, he's gonna be like, "All right, what, what, what's, what?" Dot, could I, could I have a paint, paint this this picture with your words here? This guy sounds loaded. Oh, he's super loaded. And this place, spick and span. There's not, there's not anything out of place, and the items in this room, yeah, are what you might call rare uh, okay. artifacts. Interesting. Okay. I'm standing here dripping blood, by the way, on the floor. Blood, blood on this white sterile floor, water on this floor. And, um, and he says, now, I introduce myself and the two of you. Oh, uh, me? Well, yes, you're the new faces. Oh, yeah, I'm Malik. Tamir. Malik and Tamir. He says, oh, this is for you. And he hands a box over. He puts it in Tamir's hands. What is it? Is it like open? Can, uh, it's it's open a box. Based? Uh, yeah. It is not. You'll have to like pull the lid off. Of okay, it. I'd have to open. Um. He goes, careful. Careful. That is not any ordinary item. What is it? Well, he says, open the box to find out. Don't you know how presents work, Malik? Not I'll really. open the box, We're looking at Tamir's confusion. Presents, usually that implies that we like owe somebody. I... Not particularly. He says, like I told your friends yesterday, you owe me nothing. Except the artifacts you find on your travels. So we're just gonna shoot a look over to Tal. I'm gonna look at Tal. That like, was the deal that was made. I'm like, and then I nudge uh, Tal to open the box. I already have. I open the box. Oh. What's in you there? You pop the box open um, as maybe Tamir and Tal make eye contact. Inside is an a vase, an urn. It's got a lid. He says, "Very fragile." This is. What 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 is it? Does it belong uh, to somebody special? <laughs> no, uh, it doesn't quite work that way. Um, you can roll a culture, Malik. You could or Tamir. You could roll your mystic powers for this Ooh. one specifically because you are an artificer. Can I roll for? Yeah, you guys okay. can all roll, but it's a culture roll to know what it is. I don't have culture. Can I just do an empathy? Roll? Empathy. Yep. Take a, I keep fucking Great. failing these fucking Great. mystic girls. Take a goddamn Looks point. Looks like my darkness points are going to travel over to second. Mm -hmm. Second season. How does chat feel about that? Chat, you feeling good about that? I'm feeling good about that. Because I'm so sitting on 11 season. of them. Oh, yeah, no, you, yeah. you deserve it. No, you, you deserve they it. Wipe, okay. They wipe at the end of the season. Um, and empathy. So this the, is, the there is, screen. when the box opens, Sewell, your instincts, because that's really all that you have, uh, your instincts base, tell you that something is... Yeah, something's not right um, about this. Not in a bad way, but it's definitely powerful. It's not just your basic average, like, decorative vase. I'll just take a step back after... Oh, like. Samir, you, on the other hand, this has great power to it. You could feel it automatically. Um, he notices that you notice. He says, amazing, isn't it? It calls to you, Tamir. It rings out in your ears. This has great mystic power behind it. Not like everything else in here either. Most everything in here is technology based. This is this is no tech. This is low tech, if you would. 
Mm -hmm. What? What is it? He says that is a very special item. I have paid a lot of money to bring it from the opposite side of the third horizon. Pried it from a dead man's hands, I was told. Why are you giving it to us, then? He says, because I think you may need it before this is over with. You still haven't told us what it is. It is known as a Chrysilius pod. Have you ever heard of that before? <laughs> that is, you bitch! That is the... So... Uh, I'm so sorry. So oh, Noam and I were literally on a call today, and I was just scrolling through artifacts, and I was like, man, you really need to get your hands on a chrysalis pod. It does blah 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 mm -hmm. and it's super it's like, useful, oh, wow, especially great. for you. And man, he's like, yeah, that'd be awesome. There you go, there's you go players. One. There's one... I've been planning to give you this for a while. <laughs> he's, like, he's like, yeah, but what are the chances of us ever getting on that thing? <laughs> You just know, know funny. that to use it, I get a lot of darkness. Yeah. <laughs> okay. mm -hmm. I know. Oh, uh, uh, I, I don't know what that is. Okay. Um, it is like a black urn. It says it's covered in uh, 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 base glyph for, uh, relief glyphs about two meters high. A thin crack runs along one side from top to bottom. It vibrates softly. He said, and if you go to reach for the lid, he'll go, ah, don't open it until you really need it. Like when, say, one of them are dead. Dead? What? Why? What does it do exactly? He says it has the capability of bringing someone back from the dead. I will oh. immediately put the lid back on the box. He says it can also heal wounded creatures or can do all kinds of things. As many of the artifacts in the Third Horizon, there's no definitive answer as to what they're capable of. This is so incredibly rare. I still don't understand why you would give it to us knowing that there is a potential of us not making it back. <laughs> he laughs and he says, I give it to you so that you will make it back. So it takes a moment to look at Tamir holding <clears throat> that box and there's a bit of jealousy in his eye as he looks at the gift that he got. And then he looks at the gift that he got. And then he's just like, hmm. I mean, yours could be extremely valuable, too. You don't know shit about it. I don't. You're right. But right now, I'm pissed. <laughs> yeah, right now, it still hurts, Dot. Yeah, what the fuck? Um, still and, bleeding. <laughs> and he says, no. You're welcome to spend some time here, but I have one other thing to deliver to you. And he hands a data pad over um, to whoever takes it. Mo Your actual mission. I'll take it. Um, Perfect. Tell. Scrolling through. You start scrolling through. You don't even read, really, as much as you kind of pan to see it over. There's an image of a woman in robes that you just have to stop on. It takes your breath away, in fact. It's the same woman who blessed your ship all those many weeks ago that you met at the cantina. Across her face, in big red letters, it says, missing, assumed dead along with more faces, missing, assumed dead, missing, assumed dead, missing, assumed dead. He says, those are the profiles of the high-powered mystics aboard Coriolis that we know for a fact have been acquired. He says, I gave you a cred stick that should serve you well for suiting your ship. And he says, if you need more, you know where to come and find me. Uh, but more importantly, he says, returning some of these people would be ideal. Not everyone believes that mystics are a disease. He says, just because we don't understand it does not mean that it's not a good thing. Hmm. Any questions? So... We go to that the area written in the data pad, find those people, bring them back, and that's it. He kind of nods. Sure. That'll be it. Wow. Um, this is when I, I scroll <laughs> back through and I start actually reading fine details. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you begin scrolling through reading fine details. Um, uh, most of this mission will be given to you at the top of season two, because that's 
what we're going to do is actually plan this mission out over the next week. Um, but it is an infiltration mission. Uh, it seems that there is a location in the jungle of Kua that is a research facility that they believe has been taken over by these commandos, uh, this, this kind of um, uh, group uh, that is cleansing Coriolis. Uh, why they're taking mystics here, you're not sure. Um, they're also not sure of how many have actually survived because people have also just like gone missing. They could be dead. But something is happening here. And, the, and though the mission does not state it, there is some kind of correlation at least in the um, the minds of the people that have given this to you, um, the consortium, that there's a connection between what ha happened in Tawan and what is happening on the surface of Kua. Okay. And he simply says, now, I have other business to attend to, but I'm glad I got you the package. You captained the mission. And he says, I'll see you when you return. Hmm? Yes. Thank you. Of course. Yeah. And he waves you a Jew. Sorry, so we can look around? Oh, he says, please. This is my private collection. Sure. Cool. And then he oh, leaves. Oh, what does it? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to put this in all of your journals now so you can see the pod. Just to be clear, Dot, he says, look around and then leaves? He, no. <laughs> This is his home. Well, he said uh, he had something he goes, to do. He did. His, he does. Um, he had other things to attend to, but he people viewing his collection is huge. This is like a museum for him. This is like a private mm -hmm. home museum is what this is, his collection. Um, he also, thing. yeah, it's a pride thing for him. Um, but he also stops and uh, as he passes you, Tamir, and he leans in and he goes, what is that? What do you have on you? I'm sorry? Your pocket. It's ringing. He says, did you find something on your travels? No. Not on our travels. He leans in a little closer. What did you find? Um, he will hold it out. He gasps when you pull it forth. He says, is it really a... He smiles. Mm. He says, do you know what that is? No, I've been trying to figure out what this is. Do you know what it is? He says, of course I know what that is. What is it? He says, that is a hand card sym symmetry stone. I says, don't know Do you what that means. <laughs> he says, that stone has mystical power cast upon it by whoever carved it. Who gave that to you? I found it. Tao, her mind runs through your head, remembering her handing mm -hmm. you the statue with this thing attached to it. Oh, I know. Now yes. missing. And he says, if you get it to work, I'd love to know what she can, or uh, I'd love to know what they, power they put on it. How do you get it to work? Well, he says, it takes mystic to activate it, of course. It's funny, it only vibrates when it's on a mystic. He looks you deep in the eyes. Safe travels. His two security officers kind of open one door um, and stay, kind of stand uh, watching all of you as you go around and view his collection. Very rare things here under glass casing. It's the season finale, guys. Uh, Malik, Malik looks to Tal and says, hey, can I... Um... Any like motions towards the data pad that she's holding? Sure. What? Uh, Malik takes the data pad in one hand and then quickly pulls his hand out of his pocket and puts his other hand underneath the data pad, putting his data pad underneath this data pad. And then he begins casually scrolling through the mission as he's walking around looking at all the prices artifacts that are in here because they're very interesting. He's definitely not hacking the device. And I'm just going to go ahead and roll arbitrarily for you for no reason at all, Doc. Which device are you hacking? The one with uh, your mission on it? I am trying to hack this guy's house. I assume his data pad is connected to his house. And I the would whole like, house? I'm hacking his network, right? So like if you're, okay. you know, your Wi-Fi kind of you thing. You can definitely try. Yeah, that's my goal. So, uh, so I have my data pad, which is gives me a plus three. Hacking. 
right. and the one on top posing as the real data pad. So does does having his data pad from his house give me any pluses? You don't know that it's from his house. You just know it had your mission on it. That's fair. I'm gonna roll for you. Get ready to get some more darkness points. Or not. Okay. You kind of hack through. First off, you realize that the data pad he gave you is a, it is, it, the only thing on this is your mission. This is like the one that Sewell was given. This is a private file. One. Mm-hmm. Two, you try to hack into his house. He has massive security measures in place. Mm-hmm. There is a high probability these are not the only things. These are just his best things on display. What you do manage to realize is that high security of this nature is only in place for people that have the money and the items to protect. Mm. Consortium coding blocks you from entering with anything other than a critical success. Mm. Part of me wants to give you a darkness point just to see what happens. I mean, you could roll lower. That's true. I mean, you're right. I the could last set thing you want to do alarms. is set off your patron's set, alarm. Set off a damn alarm. You got me. The there. fact of the matter is, you can take a pretty, at least of this room, a pretty decent, um, I don't know, just inventory. Um, and I can give you a list of some of the things. Well, would you know them is the real question. Some of them are labeled, yeah, some of them are not. Yeah. But I can give you a list of some of the things that he's got in this place. That's definitely not Malik's um, thing. I mean, if, if he has them, like, in, in the open side of his network, I'll just download that. Um, yeah. But, like, if I can't get through to, like, I just know he has juicy hidden things, and now yeah. I'm intrigued. Oh, he peeks his head back in. One more time. Of course he does. And he says, oh, by the way, Malik. Yes. I suggest you no longer work with Jubal. I'm sorry, I don't know who that is. He says, dealing drugs, it's not my business. And I can't be your patron when you deal against my biggest nemesis. Hmm? Is that the guy downstairs? He says, Malik, don't play dumb. Have a good evening. Okay. All right. And that guy's name is Jabal. you now know his name. And you now know that he is the nemesis of your patron. And you did business with him. Great. You all make your way around. You're able to look at what you want. Back down to the ship. When you arrive, somebody is on board. Two people are on board. Not just the doctor, but Tal, your mother, and your father sit at a table with the doctor. Nope, you're muted. That's fantastic. Mm -hmm. Fuck, we didn't even get a talk. This is what happens when you chase soul to a club. <laughs> you don't get to talk. <laughs> no, I, if you no, want to talk on your way had, back, you would have, have some time to talk time. on your way back. No, no, no. This is what happens <laughs> when you're a goddamn tattletale and you go run to Tal's mom and say your daughters you are mystic. Fucking shit. Okay, okay, Fuck so, you. <laughs> do you guys are we are we walking back in or? I, will I give am. You, there is a chance mm-hmm. for you to chat on your way back to the vessel if you want it. If not, we'll say you arrive and your parents are there. I will leave that up to you. I think he'd want to talk to her in private, not with everybody else around. So okay. I don't think it gets brought up. Besides, we only have like 15 minutes. Right. The doctor <laughs> The doctor sits there. Maybe next week we could have just an RP episode of Mike's feeling saucy about it. Mike's always feeling saucy. Okay, so... Um, your mother stands. You hear uh, Lamar go, oh, you're back. I found your parents. So look at both of them be like, fuck this. And I'm just going to walk into the shower to wash off and just leave the scene. You leave. Uh, she My goes, mother. oh. Wait, she, she follows back. Are you injured? I uh-huh. see you're bleeding. I'm coming. Uh, uh-huh. And she trails behind. Uh, I will. Leaving I will. <laughs> she bangs on the door. I should look at that. I'll fucking kill you. Leave me alone. And Tamir, Malik, and Tao are standing there in kind of the general area with with Tao's parents. Um, her father wears um, some kind of security garb, uh, not like uh, probably frontline security, probably high end security. Um, nicer suit, um, no gun shown or anything like that but very clean and well kept and your mother of course Tao in her professor robes um, as she's been doing her daily duties and she gets up and she hugs you hello mother she goes you look great Tao 
Please don't lie to me. Sure, but thanks. Tired, but you still look good. Uh, and she says, I um, got a visit from my student before I got a visit from my daughter. Amir just like mouths to towel, like, I'm sorry. I look daggers at you. She says, I guess that's not really true. I bumped into him in the library. Well, I was planning on coming by, but I had to finish up some business. When I heard that the Defiant was not docked in the net, I had to do a little research. Your father, in fact, was able to find out that you were docked in the private docks in the upper floors. I'm so yeah. proud of you, Tal. Thank you, Mother. She looks around. This ship could use a good cleaning. Yeah, well... And really, the Defiant is the name you chose? Yes, Mother, that's the name I chose. Of course. It's your ship, right? <laughs> Do you really think anything fit better at the time? No, I guess not. She says, um... Tal, I... I come bringing some news. Um, uh, <clears throat> Tamir informed me you've not been feeling well. Well, yeah, I'm tired. Everyone's tired. It's been a long couple of weeks. She says you should take care of yourself. Um, you can tell that she's trying to choose her words appropriately and is struggling, and your father steps up and he says, Tal, your sister... We haven't heard from her in about four weeks. We believe that she's missing. Your mother kind of looks to the floor and your father says, it, she told us that she's been not feeling well. And I'm afraid that she trusted that information with the wrong people. I, uh, I, I look at my dad and I say, are you telling me because you want me to find her or are you telling me for another reason? I'm telling you because if you're not feeling well like your sister, you should take precautions. We love you. And whatever sickness that you may be <clears throat> dealing with right now, we encourage you to keep it to yourself for your own safety. Things are different than when you left a few weeks ago. I can tell. All right. Well, I will keep doing exactly the same things I've been doing, which is keeping to myself and doing my jobs. Is it true? Your mother says she looks at you with tears in her eyes. Are you sick? Not sick at all, mother. You know what I mean, Tal? A lot of weird things have happened recently. Well, you've always been able to take care of yourself and you've never really needed us. And she looks at your father. Your sister, on the other hand, is wild card. Your mother kind of drops her head and you can hear her sniffle a little bit. She's definitely upset. Your father puts his hand on her shoulders and he says, I'm afraid she's a bit overcome. I walk up to my mother again. I, I assume that we were standing pretty close already. Mm -hmm. And I, I put my hands on each shoulder and I say, I'll find her. She was... My understanding is that your sister was dealing in some business in the cellar. Not a surprise. You know that that was her stomping ground. Well, I think she trusted the wrong people. She always did. He says it's true. 
I just want to make sure you're trusting the right ones. And he looks at Tamir and he looks really hard at Malik. Malik, he just looks suspicious. That's fair. I have no reason to be in this conversation, but as soon as he realized what it was, he just leaned back against the wall and is listening to this. Can I come out of the shower at the, or just like the bathroom at no, this point? Dirty yeah, I imagine you walk across the hallway like just in a towel, um, and you hear the med bag. She goes, "I can look at it now." I turn around and go right back in. Oh, your father also looks to the kooky woman. I didn't have a choice on that one. Malik brought her back. We almost died a couple times, so I can't really say no to a medic. Your mother nods, sniffling again. She says, please be careful. Do my best, Mom. She leaves, and your father stays, and he says she's having a hard time, Tal. Yeah, we all are. a lot of pressure from the university to make known the sick. More importantly, there's... um, from a security standpoint, a lot of whispers of breaches in security. You're not part of this, are you? Your father looks at you, he says, part of what? He goes, no, I'm trying to stop it. But don't tell your mother. She believes that I'm working private security. Which tells you your father is more on the front lines than you know. Hey, Dad, guess what? We made a portal jump into a dark system. (laughs) And? Still here. That's my girl. He says, I don't care if you're sick, Tao. I'm not sick. It's not an illness. He kind of nods. He says, that's what the mystics say. Well, I don't know anything about mysticism, but please take care of her. Says I am. It'll be a lot easier when she can lay eyes on your sister again might have a way of finding her. I love you, Tal. I'm proud of you. I love you too, Dad. I'm sorry your mother's having a hard time. She'll come around. She feels like it is her fault in some way that you and your sister are sick. (sighs) Well... Certainly didn't happen while I was here, so it's not her fault. I am. Try telling her that. (laughs) He kisses you on the forehead. He looks again at Malik and Tamir. He says, Tamir, my wife trusts you. I do not. Take care of my daughter, or you'll answer for it. Of course, uh, no question. I'll see you when you return to Coriolis, Tal. Yeah. I'll come say hi before I even take a shower. And he opens the door. You can see your mother, like down the gangway, kind of away. Your father walks out. And Tal, you're the only one that sees it. About 15 feet off from them is a child. He stands nearby. He looks at them. Smiles, looks at you. I narrow my eyes at him. He nods in an understanding. And instead, he looks up at a woman walking by, stops her, grabs her hand, somebody you don't know, begins to walk away with her. This station's fucked. Yep. Yes, it is. 
you put an evil demon gin. I work. closed the door. <laughs> I would like to come out of the showers. You come out of the showers. Wow. And the camera cuts to Malik. Malik, what are you doing here in our last few minutes? As uh, soon as that 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 card works by entering the number, That's the right. IP address, basically. Cool. Um, so as soon as uh, Sewell comes out of the shower as a distraction, uh, Malik opens the or or either either if it's with enough time, he either opens the door or he slides out as the door to the ship's closing. Um, and when the door is closed behind him, he's hey, hey. and he motions towards uh, Tal's dad with a hey because he didn't get a name. Right. What, what did we name your dad, Tell? Did we? Shit. <laughs> I don't That's remember. okay. That's okay. Um, he says, he I says, look through the com- Oh, hold on. I mean, uh, Miss- you look through the conversation. Um, if I can't remember. We talk a lot. We Mr. do. Mr. We talk Tuma? so much. Mr. Tuma. Uh, yeah, you can just call him Mr. Tuma for now. Yeah. He stops. I mean, I don't even think I honestly know Tal's last name. I don't think I've ever asked, nor have I, has Malik ever had the opportunity you, to care. You would know Tal Tuma is her name, I sure. mean, at some point. I'm but... sure it's like on her jumpsuit. It's embroidered <laughs> yeah. on the jumpsuit. Yeah, on the um, jumpsuit. Yeah. She also has checked in as Captain Tuma. That's yeah. true, yeah. Mm-hmm. That's true, yeah. So yeah. you would know that. So Malik kind of, hey, uh, sir? He stops, tilts his head. Mm-hmm. Uh, your daughter's missing? You said? <clears throat> yes. You said she does work down... And he, like, he motions vaguely downstairs. She has a specific taste in friends. Um, here. He reaches in and pulls out a card of his own. Uh, I guess kind of similar to the... the, the like, it's a contact card, right? It says, mm-hmm. if you could... Um, and he, like shoots his eyes down to the security kind of uniform uh, as discreetly as possible. Give me a list of her friends and what she was doing and I will find her. The sooner the better. He takes your your calling card. <clears throat> your calling card and he says, thank you. Mm-hmm. It makes me a little concerned that you <clears throat> also deal in the cellar, but... I try to do it as little as possible, but... He, he goes, not everything in the cellar is bad. I know. I've spent my fair share of days down there. But if it reunites a family, then... There's, like, that awkward pause, and he says, uh, the sooner the better. He have says, a, the sooner the better. Have a good night. And he kind of turns before it gets any more emotional, and he walks back towards the ship. He watches you walk away. His wife is down by the elevators trying to compose herself. And we watch as Malik pops the door to the Defiant. The camera pans in on all of you. The doctor comes running and scoops Malik's arm in hers. Sewell, maybe we see him in a mirror, staring at his new mark of judgment. Mir and Tao probably stand alone face to face. Having a moment of questions for one another, but also a moment of understanding as they stand aboard a vessel, two mystics on Coriolis, while the rest of the mystics are going missing. Your sister, the priestess, people you know, family members, Children, students. And the camera pans out down a hallway, all the way back to the entrance of Coriolis. As the camera sits, staring at a massive space station spinning in orbit around the planet of Kua. Somewhere out in the distance, We see stars flicker. One of them goes out. And then another. The darkness is approaching. It has already sent agents here. It already has creatures working for it. 
and Coriolis is beginning to seed corruption. The emissaries are missing. People are missing. And the stars are going out one by one. As a crack to the first horizon still remains, caught between two doors in the Tawan system, something is knocking. Something has already slipped through the crack, but more awaits. And as we finish out the final moments of this little adventure, we pan to the surface of Kua through a thick jungle to a med lab that is slowly being taken over by nature. Thick rustling and the screams of humans from afar, deep in the bowels of this med lab that has been converted into something that is only proper for nightmares. But the activities happening here are not brought on by Martin monsters or creatures of the darkness, but by humans against other humans. The fear of the lack of humanity that slowly is being taken over by the darkness. And season one of The Void comes to a close. Setting up for season two. Oh, I played more cards today. Um, oh yeah, I played the faceless. You all got an artifact. Oops, oh, cool. Can we so just have... Real, real quick, can we just have a round of applause for Dot? Because that was yeah. masterful. Uh, <laughs> can we get some, let's get some hype in the chat. This is oh, the season yes, finale. Yes, yes. Yeah. That was, was wonderful. Super, this was super Amazing. dope. Uh, <laughs> so as our, uh, I know we got to wrap up quickly here, but as uh, our finales go, I like to go around and, and do outro, our normal introductions and get your thoughts and feelings on the show. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll do it quickly. This time, because next week, I think the entire cast wants to come back and we'll do some shooting the shit and just hanging out with you guys for a little bit uh, so we can go and detail more how we feel about this game, what our thoughts, what our theories are, what our concerns, why we want to cry about it, all that fun stuff. Uh, but thank you so much, cast, uh, for being thank here. Thank you all. Uh, I have to say, I'm sorry, Mike, I'm going to interrupt you. Go, I want to thank all of you. You can thank me all you want, but like... I'm just a facilitator. Great story is made by great characters who make great and tough choices and i just want to applaud all of you because you kept this going and so much of my decisions were entirely based on the incredible role play that you brought to the table for sure um yeah cast everyone dot included thank you so much for being here this has been an amazing show uh super fun time uh everyone knows i love free league stuff this has been my first Coriolis campaign and uh it is arguably the best one so far so I am excited for this game. I'm excited for season two. I'm excited to continue playing with you people. Chat, I'm excited for your presence and how much you're going to fuck us up with that corruption bar in season two. Uh, because, you know, who can get enough of that garbage? Uh, so thank you everyone for being here, for all the subs, donations, Patreon follows, Discord chats, all that good stuff. Thank you so much. Uh, let's go around, do our introductions, hear your thoughts on the game, and get the hell out of here so we can set up for season two. Uh, we'll start with, uh, with, uh, Aris. Who are you? Where can we... Oh, I'm sorry. How, how did I say it the first episode? Aris. Uh, <laughs> who are you? Where can we find you on the internet? And what are you up to? And what Space is you is ass. Hello, Space I is am ass. Space's ass. <laughs> if you don't, if you don't rebrand, I'm being pissed. <laughs> Think of the logo. New Twitter name incoming. Oh. Uh, <laughs> I love God. it. Hi, I'm Erin Savad. I uh, make a lot of stuff. I make like dice bags and trays and whatnot. I also play a lot of RPGs. Uh, speaking of RPGs, I loved this one. This was phenomenal. I like the uh, I like the system and getting to play with all of you and getting to know everybody better. Like I already knew know him a little bit and I knew Dot, but I didn't know Paul and Mike. So I'm really glad I got to know y'all. And uh, I cannot wait for season two. Hell yep. freaking yeah. 
Um, with that, oh, uh, did you have any other thoughts about this game? Oh, there's so many thoughts. I'm going to need like two hours. All right. Well, then we have those two hours <laughs> next week. I was going to um, say next week we can just sit around and talk yeah, about it. Exactly. We're uh, going to, we'll, we'll go through all that later. Perfect. With that, so we'll go thoughts. over to the other new person on the stream. And in this game, uh, Paul, who are you? Where can we find you on the internet? And what are you up to? And what did you think about this game? Hello. My name is Paul. You can find me on Twitter at in one, two, three, all across every platform as well. Um, I thought this game was ridiculously awesome. I never played a space themed tabletop game ever. I really don't play games period that much. So it's not okay. Anyway, but um, <laughs> it was a lot of fun, uh, but I will say whether it's this game, D and D another tabletop game, I had so much fun because of the cast and the DM and the GM, sorry. So I just want to say my favorite thing about the game is being able to play with everyone in this call. So yeah, again, I have a lot more to talk about, but I also would also need two hours. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> really love the ship thing, having like a station, having like a home. I thought that was really, really cool. So hell yeah. You know what we could do next week? We could spend all of your monies to upgrade your ship for everybody. Yeah, that's part of we the can, plan. We can. I was about to say we could chat. We could chat game with it with 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 everybody, and then we can it's upgrade our, your ship. Our downtime actions. Yeah, perfect. I'm looking at guns. Uh, I knew that was gonna happen. <laughs> Gnome. Who are you? Where can we find you on the internet? What are you up to and what did you think about this game? Uh, it's for the sake of time. My name is Nomi. You can find me on Twitch, Twitter, and Instagram at Nomadic. Uh, I do a lot of TTRPG things in TTRPG spaces, including this show, um, which honestly is probably the, my favorite game I have ever played. And I have played a many of shows. Hell yeah. And a many of games. Hell yeah. And I love this. And it is a thousand percent because of the people who are playing. A thousand percent. It's it's a great system, it's mm -hmm. a great story, but I could not have been more like just humbled to be playing with these powerhouses. So thank you. Hell freaking yeah. Um and saving our fearless GM for last. Dot, who are you? Work we find you on the internet. What are you up to and what did you think about Coriolis? Well, I think I told you all at the very top what I thought about Coriolis. I fell in love with this game the first time I popped the book open. Um, I actually have one of my Patreon supporters to thank for that, uh, who introduced me to the game. And the moment I cracked it open, um, I knew I had to run something eventually in it. And so I had been simmering and planning a Coriolis campaign in private without anybody's knowledge for uh, quite a few months. And then it was you, Mike, that were like, mm, well, we want to play some dark stuff. And I was like, well, we could, I, I could run a Coriolis campaign um so and here we are yeah. 12 episodes later without missing a single one I know. another unmade gaming like that might be a first i was about to say a first for an unmade gaming yeah. show i know because i've been on a lot of them yeah. <laughs> um, i've been on a lot of them uh that we didn't miss one and so again that that level of dedication um getting to watch all of you each week beg for more time and more story both from the audience and from the cast is what keeps me going it is everything. And like I said, without all of you um, and your talents and your dedication to character and story, um, we wouldn't we wouldn't have had this season of, of The Void. Uh, so thank you all for running with my crazy little idea based on a literal poster uh, hanging in a friend's apartment in college. Um, this this idea of um, of how we play with humanity and what does it mean to have humanity in a dark and devoid place called space. Um, so yeah, we'll explore some more of that. I can talk more about the themes and my planning and what I had planned and what changed and all of that next week. But um, th yeah, I just want to thank chat as well for your support and for making all of this a thing. Um, if you want to see more of what I do, Right now, the best, bliss, bleh, the best place to find me uh, is over on the Dad's Garage ATL Twitch channel. Um, I am right now kind of full-time streaming for them as our theater um, is under quarantine um and we are unable to produce so i've been helping produce a twitch channel for all of our improvisers um it's been really great we've had two weeks of just it's been a free-for-all and it's been nuts there have been some crazy shit uh, that we have produced uh next week we're going into a little bit more of a solidified schedule but that's where you can find me during the days um, i'm going to be taking two weeks off of my channel to get prepared for my next launch, which is happening mid-April. Um, I'll be launching an Overlight campaign. If you like this level of dark sci-fi, I'm bringing that level of like heavy uh, story to a psychedelic fantasy 
game. Yeah. Um, so that will be happening over on my channel. Um, start, like I said, starting in April, and I've got an amazing cast for that. Um, announcements will be coming out very soon. And other than that, we got a Sunday fun day this weekend. So um, a little dot lot love. I will play, be playing Kids on Bikes and Coriolis, in fact. So we'll be doing a Coriolis one shot if you need some more. Oh, yeah. And uh, those are those are some places you can find me along with a slew of others. Just follow me on social media. Fan freaking tastic. Uh, folks, uh, if you don't mind, Patreon, Discord, links down below for all those things. Uh, but I want to shout out again, like Dot had said, uh, twitch.tv slash dad's garage ATL. Uh, please go follow that Twitch channel. Uh, support uh, local theater communities and all that fun stuff in these trying times. Give them a follow. Watch their shows. Spike those number counts. All that fun stuff. If you can't donate, um, yep. be there. We've even got a silent auction happening right now. we got some really crazy cool stuff. Um, I believe an Xbox One went up for bid today. Dope. Um, along with a bunch of other crazy shit like some uh, limited edition Dolt Swim merch and... Some all archer, kinds of archer stuff, I think. You said. Oh, archer stuff. Yeah, yeah, there's some archer stuff. So, and you know what? If you don't want to bid on anything, that's cool. There's a place that you can just go make a donation. Hell yeah! It'll definitely help this dot keep a job. So please do that. Check them out. Watch the shows. Improv community. It's great stuff. With that, we will end season one of 2020 on Unmade Gaming. We will see you back in a few weeks for season two, launching all new shows. In the meantime, that's it from all of us. Bye bye.